I just want to take a look at the desert festival and kind of explain it. I have some files set up that will uh, help me. And I kind of just want to show you guys how to get a bunch of calico eggs, at least the ways that I found out to get a bunch of calico eggs. So I set up two files here, even though you only see one. Uh, these files have two chests. One of them is for a lower tier Skull Cavern run, some setup that you would likely have going into year two when most people actually get to this event instead of in year one. And then the second chest is going to have everything you could possibly imagine, and we're just going to see how many calico eggs we can get in a single run. Uh, so this is the first chest. This is kind of what I imagine most people would have going into year two if you wanted to do like a legit run. It's like people may say 250 bombs. Yeah, that's like not a lot. I know they went up in price, but that's not a lot. So it's like you're going to have, I, I would say, a steel pickaxe. I'm not going to do galaxy hammer. I'll do a cudgel. Salad, spice eels are easy to get. You should at least buy a few espressos if needed. Obviously bombs. You should probably bring more staircases, but I'm only going to do five just for the fun. You gotta have drip, so I'm bringing the squid hat since it's new. I'm just gonna do two glowstone rings and dark boots. And then you always want to have a desert warp. So it's kind of just like... I don't know. I feel like this is just like an appropriate setup. For somebody who's just getting into Skull Caverns in year two. So, first thing you're going to do is Desert Warp, obviously. Uh, now, I would go into Skull Caverns this first day, but I have a file set up where I have everything on me going into the next day, so I don't really want to do that. And then, second off, I actually want to show off the festival a little bit and where you can get other Calico eggs before you go in, in case if you don't want to do the Skull Caverns, if it's like a bad luck day or whatever. So, the first thing that you should always do is come over to the Chef Guy. The chef guy can give you a bunch of buffs that stack with your other buffs or your other food buffs. And the only two options that you should ever do is you should start with rare fruit. This gives extra luck and then uncomfortably hot sauce. So basically what this is going to do is going to give you plus three luck and plus one move speed. No other combination is nearly as good. You don't even need to think about doing any other combination. Plus one speed, plus three luck. It's ridiculous. And then if I eat a spicy eel... And a coffee. I'm going to have plus three speed and plus four luck. Just permanent. Or, yeah, basically throughout the entire day. Like, this is unholy. Absolutely unholy in terms of Skull Caverns. It's like you have a scuffed magic rock candy. So the event itself doesn't actually start until, I believe, 10. So there's a few things that you can I can show off. There's going to be some stalls here that can have NPCs. They are a random NPC. It's seated to the day, so if you reset, you'll still get the same NPCs. But all the NPCs have different uh, stock. The most notable thing is if you get a spouse to show up, they will sell their spouse weapons. So the old obtainable spouse weapons, they will end up reaching. Uh, this is a little like a race thing. So you just talk to him. Uh, can't talk to him yet, and then you pick a racer. There's like four or five different racers. I've seen a snail before. This crab is different. Apparently, from my testing, this is completely set to the day. Like, the winning order is always the same. So, it's like, I did a bunch of testing. The first person who will win this race will always be this chicken. And then the second, the person who wins the second race is this crab. So in theory, if you just want to sit here and guess on the hour every single hour and just write down whoever wins every single time, you can just win every single race in the day. It's 100% seated. The only weird thing is, is for the first race, you have to be like spam clicking this guy if you want to guess. Otherwise, it's too late. So it's like as soon as it turns 10, you got to click on him. 10, and you click on him. And then you're gonna, uh, I'm gonna guess Speed Rooster. The so Speed Rooster is gonna win. Uh, and as this race is going off, because it's the same every time, Desert Merchant's still here, sells the exact same stock, nothing new other than the, obviously the new 1.6 items. Traveling Merchant, here as well, apparently close to noon, sells the Traveling Merchant stock. Gonna just slightly watch this. But as you can see, the chicken's just gonna win. 
is 100% seeded, which is kind of funny. Uh, winning this only gives 20 Calico eggs, so it's actually really not a great source of eggs. There's definitely much better. Like, much better. As you can see, Speed Rooster won. So, 20 Calico Eggs. That's not too bad. If you're not looking to do Skull Caverns, obviously it's something to do all day. You got Emily's Changing Room down here. I'm not going to do this because I don't want to mess with my drip, but she just gives you like a random drip. I really don't know how it's determined, but she just gives you something. This guy rigs the event, but I don't think he actually can rig the event because it's seated. I don't understand him. It's kind of a waste of eggs, to be quite honest. Got a cute flamingo down here. And then we got a guy who just gives you a free cactus. I need a cactus or I'm going to burst. Yes, give me a cactus. There's four different types of cactuses you can get. I don't know what determines which one you get. But you can get four different types of cactus. Oh, and here's the NPC. So, you know, if you need a skeleton hand and a chipped emporia you can buy that from vincent or maybe even like a single sap and then granny sells uh, some cookie wallpaper i don't know if this is exclusive she also sells some cookies and mixed seeds so, you want those you can get those some npcs are definitely better than others i think the best uh shop i've seen is demetrius where he sells a bunch of uh deluxe speed grow which could be useful we got this shop here. He sells mainly hats. If you're missing out on strawberries, you can get strawberries. And then desert related uh, furniture. And then what color is weekly? If you are down on forging XP and you have a bunch of calico eggs, I mean, this is infinite technically. Uh, that said, it's not, I don't think it's the greatest source. Uh, Remember to check this trash can. It's always eight free calico eggs. I think it refreshes every day too. This guy is a questionnaire. I think it gives the exact same per day, but he has a list of questions he can ask. So it's like, who runs the museum at Pelican Town? Gunther. What does garlic, what season does garlic grow in? Spring. What season can you catch the pufferfish? Summer. Where can you catch the sunfish? Mine's floor 20. If you get them all right, he gives you 50 calico eggs, which is always a nice bonus. This guy warps you home as per usual. A uh, little uh, visual exploit that I found. If you just pickaxe right here, it shows through the tent. Don't ask how I found that. You can also do it on the other side too. Doesn't work up here, but it only works when you're down in this corner. Don't know why. Uh... Harvey does nothing. You just wake up here if you pass out. And then finally, or not finally, but second to last, we got Willie's quest. He does three quest boards, one per day. The first day is three sandfish. The second day, he asks for a uh, scorpion carp. And then the third day, he loses his fishing tackle or something like that. And you just have to fish and find it from a treasure chest, I believe. So it's pretty quick. Uh, it also is a nice amount of egg rewards. I'm not going to do it since I don't have a fishing rod on me, but again, if you're not going into the mines, this is like a good extra source of, um, calico eggs. Obviously the best source of calico eggs is going to be in Skull Caverns here. Uh, speaking of Skull Caverns, Merlin gives two quests every day that you have an option to pick between one. Uh, ideally, if you're, again, not going to do a deep skull cavern dive, just take the higher value one and get your calico eggs and get out 15 pieces of iridium ore. Really isn't that bad. Just kill a few purple slimes or iridium crabs, and you don't even need to find the iridium ore itself. Uh, and then last but not least, let's just explain how the mines work. So... Uh, you can read how the mines work through this, but basically to sum up, uh, you have a egg rating. Every five floors, this egg rating increases, and whenever it increases, you are more likely to find more eggs. 
You can also increase this A grading by one every time you find a Calico statue, which are going to be these big tall cat statues. These statues can give you various effects, ranging from refresh yourself to spotting more enemies to making enemies do more damage to just giving yourself calico eggs and even permanent buffs it does a bunch of stuff and obviously the higher egg rating you have the more uh eggs you're going to find and then once you're done with the end of the day this is generally this is different than what uh you would normally do in skull caverns normally you pass out in skull caverns because if you pass out you only lose money and you can generally make more money in the last few minutes of skull caverns than the time it takes you to run home but for this event you don't want to you don't want to pass out you want to run to gill before you pass out because if you talk to gill after you do the dive he will give you bonus eggs so it's like when you're getting to the 130 mark that's when you want to leave and talk to this guy <laughs> give give gill some love it's like oh and that that's kind of the event a lot of the events fun comes from skull cavern dives so unfortunately if you're not a huge fan of skull caverns this event is not going to be the greatest but hey at least there's a variety of things you can do you can also pet a camel if you're that bored all right so with that i want to show off how i would do a skull cavern dive dive with kind of the year one setup that i would expect myself to have if i was playing in a slightly casual format to just have and what most people will have so again we're just gonna ha do this with bombs a few staircases and then pretty minimal gear some people would probably use a different setup i just can't live without uh magnetism so i'm just gonna use double magnetism and then obviously we have this i am going to sleep a day just to get random luck because i'm pretty sure i set this up with smappy so i have best luck which is kind of unrealistic so i'm going to sleep a day have all my uh, settings changed. We're going to immediately pop the totem. And I'm going to check the lock. We don't need it. Smile. Get the double food buff. And then you're going to run to the guy in the kitchen. Because we need the move speed and extra luck buffs. Again, you're going to select rare fruit for the extra luck. And uncomfortably hot sauce for the extra move speed. No other combination is nearly as good. I think there's one that gives you plus four luck, but I, I think the move speed is just better early on here. So I need to ignore everything. Remember to accept your quest on the way in. It's a free, what, 50 calico uh, eggs. Uh, we are going to select this because 430 should be easy. Run past everything. Make sure all your stuff is on the right hotbar and then enter. So the first thing you're going to notice me do is pause a lot. And when I say pause a lot, uh, well, the first thing you're actually going to see me do is not be an idiot and turn on animation canceling. Because I am a dirty speedrunner. Uh, you're going to see me pause a lot, especially after every time I go down a floor. The reason for this is solely because when you're going down a floor, the floor is loading up and this in-game timer is for some reason still moving. So... Uh, that means to reduce the amount of time that that in-game timer is moving, I am going to pause. It's kind of hard to time on drop shafts. And then whenever you see the statue, you're going to click on it. 10 calico eggs, that's pretty good. Uh, again, they can sometimes give really good effects, sometimes they can give really bad effects. You just got to hope that they are. I am apparently really bad at timing. No effect. You really do want to click on these uh, statues. They give you plus one egg score every time. And the only other way to get egg score is via uh, going down five floors. Whenever you see a drop shaft, you're definitely going to want to do this. And for those who are very curious about what type of RNG I'm using, I am using... Uh, oh, what is it called? Uh, I'm using... I'm not using Legacy. I'm using the default now. Um, that's just because it's somewhat better, but whatever. I'll pick these up. As you can see, I'm basically avoiding enemies. I'm getting extremely lucky with drop shafts, by the way. We're just going to comment on that. Uh, I'm just going to comment on that real quick. I should have probably have picked up those eggs. But yeah, you can just see me throwing down bombs. It's kind of just like, don't really got much else to do. I don't know. Um... Uh, 
how much it's actually worth to pick up some of this stuff. Oh, you know, I don't know what I also forgot to go over. I'm kind of a mess everywhere. I was trying to organize this yesterday. Uh, if you're wondering what my skills are, it's plus one minor, and then I just went scout. This is the tree path that I always go for acrobat later on. I just wanted a few combat levels, so my HP isn't nothing. And then, obviously, I just took the minor perk because it's the better perk. Um, But, yeah. I don't know if the plus one mining affects the eggs or not, and that's kind of like... I would assume so, since it counts as an ore, but it's hard to tell sometimes. Uh... The main thing that you're probably uh, also going to notice is the very little amount of times I'm actually interacting with enemies. Interacting with enemies is slow and just unneeded. Especially when your weapon isn't, like, that great. More serpents, how great. Especially when your weapon isn't that great, so it's just easier to avoid most monsters uh, in this case. And if you're getting swarmed by monsters, it mainly just means you're either in the hard variant of Skull Caverns, or you're taking too long to get off the floor. The other thing that you will... I keep saying the other thing that you'll notice. Like, how many times am I, like, just going to be a bot? Like, I'll blow up an area with a bomb and then just continue running to the next area to get the next bomb down. That's mainly be... And it's like, I won't return if I get a ladder previously. It's because I don't really want to wait for the bomb to go off. And the amount of calico eggs I'm realistically going to get is not, like, high enough to matter. Uh, um, it's bad that I got hit by that guy. You go away. You always bomb or always destroy rocks on... Oh, well, there goes one of my ladders. On these uh, chest floors. Oh, wait, I like the squid drip. Because even though you have a freebie right here, uh, these floors still have a chance of dropping ladders. The reason for that is because how ladders like the spawn is... When you have a freebie on the floor, no other ladders can spawn. If you get a ladder from a rock, no other ladders can spawn. But if there is a ladder that spawns from an enemy or a ladder that is put into the floor by default, um, like floor 10 or like this floor layout here, or for example, in the regular mines, floor 12, the really long narrow room with the coal cart at the end, you can still get ladders. The reason this is important is because in Skull Caverns, when you can get a ladder spawn, it has a chance of converting into a drop shaft. So, you keep breaking rocks until you have a ladder. The reason you don't continue breaking rocks after you have a ladder is because ladders can't spawn anymore, therefore you can't get more drop shafts. Once you have a drop shaft, more ladders and more drop shafts can spawn because they don't count as ladders. They're drop shafts. They're different. I'm going to pick this up just because I don't have that much. Ooh, Gridium Shard. Or Prismatic Shard. They kind of just want to keep moving. I see a statue up here, so I'm just going to get out. Get up here. Bugs become assassins. Apparently, these assassin bugs chunk if you run into them. So, like, if you get this, if you get that, like calico punishment or whatever you want to call it uh yeah be be afraid uh i'm going to skip this floor the score the floors that i mainly skip are going to be the spirals and monster floors and occasionally like if i'm really struggling to find a different floor it's like wait for that to go off another trick that you could probably see me use is whenever I have a bomb like blow up and I just want to get the stuff and not waste time I just click the pause menu and then let all the items attract to me this is another reason why um double magnet ring is so great literally just because you can just let things attract you and have the game pause again this doesn't this doesn't work in multiplayer so if you're like you know, a multiplayer person, 
Uh, a lot of this pausing shenanigans that I'm doing does not work. And uh, I salute you to playing Skull Caverns multiplayer. It is definitely much harder than single player. There's a bunch of just pausing tricks that give you time, extra time, more time to think. You don't have to worry about enemies constantly running at you. You can pause, do a little bit of menuing, all this. Multiplayer Skull Caverns is just utter misery. Uh, I'm just gonna ladder this because that was kind of a mean floor. Ooh, this is what we're looking for. That was a massive crit. I don't think I've ever seen a cudgel just one shot a uh, a serpent like that. For that bomb to go off. I went into this with a very few amount of salads. That's why I'm like kind of somewhat taking it slow and not trying to take too much damage. Obviously, this floor sucks. I'm just going to skip it. Obviously, you can come in with a hell of a lot more salads than I am and then just be able to take a lot more damage and not have to worry about it. There's another floor I'm going to skip. I just wanted that. And then you can also come in with more ladders and just skip a bunch of floors. I just think it would just be really lame for me to like show off. This is how you do Skull Caverns. Proceeds to ladder 300 floors. It's like that. that's just not nearly as fun to show off. Speed boost. Yeah, that's one of those positive things. Now I have a plus one speed boost for the rest of the day. It would be nice to get that earlier, but you know. Again, my main goal here is calico eggs, so I'm actually not... Uh, apparently our luck buff's about to run off, out. I'm not really looking to get the most amount of iridiums. So it's like, I can definitely be going for like more iridium along the side here, but it's like, that's not my goal. My goal is calico eggs. Which honestly, thinking about it is kind of funny, because calico eggs really you really don't need that many unless if you're trying to buy a bunch of the furniture you really don't need nearly this money it's kind of just fun to see how many you can get it'd be a much better use of your time to get more iridium like a much better use of your time Oh, the other thing about the ninja bugs, they become, or assassin bugs, whatever they're called, they become vulnerable. They're not armored anymore, so you can actually kill them. Uh, just be wary. They work like the dangerous mode ones where they change directions or can change directions when you hit them. So it's like if you're on the side of them and you whack them, they can just turn straight into you and just nuke your HP bar. You really do need to be unafraid to... Uh, use bombs like it's the reason uh we come down with so many the folder refresh is nice it's like i came in with 250 you just got to use them all because it's like it's basically your your trade you're using bombs to acquire calico eggs is it the greatest price no but at least i'm getting other resources as i go if you can afford mega bombs they would be better but the issue with mega bombs is you don't always get value out of them with how big of the explosion they are and then second off they're so much more expensive now that it's like i feel like regular bombs kind of just does a good enough job there's no point of using regular bombs and then obviously for the for the higher tier run that I'm going to do, I'm basically not even going to use bombs and just only use a slingshot. I don't have that much time left. Again, we are just going to end up passing out, as I said earlier. But we don't want to pass out in the mines. We do want to make it back to Gil. Kind of like the only big thing you want to remember to do. Why not pass out? Because you want to talk to Gil before you pass out. So that's like, that's why you can go a little bit longer. Or that's why you can't go as long. Because he'll give you bonus eggs if you talk to him. And you can't talk to him the next day. You have to talk to him the day that you do it. And that's the, that's the big issue. Uh, we're just going to leave before we die. So, but see, that was a good run. What floor did I get to? 205. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Then we walk over and talk to Gil. 
Submit your egg rating of 68. So close, I should have gone like two more floors. 68! And it gives you a little funny face. They gave me 500. I think there's a cap of how many he gives you. I don't know what rating you have to get to get 500. He also gives you a magic rock candy, apparently. Rating 50 is max reward? Yeah. So it's like, you can you can get that with a pretty minimal amount of gear. And then it's like, I still got 230 Iridium. I got a bunch of other rewards. Two Prismatics. It's like, pretty good, pretty good. So that was the low tier run. So we got to an egg value of 68. Now, who wants to see the high tier run? This is what a max buff file will look like. So in this chest, we have a lot more. Iridium pickaxe with powerful. Infinity gavel enchanted with three rubies and artful. Master slingshot, 999 explosive ammo. Obviously life elixir. Magic rock candies are food of choice with some triple shot on the side. Mega bombs. Obviously, you need warp totems. Mermaid's boots. Best boots. Uh, I, honestly, Cinder Clown shoes is better, but I just gave myself Mermaid's boots, and I don't feel like changing it anymore. But Cinder Clown shoes would be better. They don't really make a difference, though. Let's be real. Uh, our two rings is... I am doing Iridium Bands combined with uh, the Burglar's Ring. So when I actually kill enemies, they give me more loot. And then Savage Ring, which gives me plus two move speed whenever I kill an enemy. Very good rings. And this is where the one point uh the one point six spoilers begin. We're going to be using a level five fairy box. This basically heals you in combat, so I don't really have to ever think about healing, so I can kind of just go, go, go and never worry about it. None of the other pets really help you that much. The damage pets don't really matter, the damage trinkets don't matter. You just want to just keep going, which is why I think the fairy box is the best. Obviously, we're going to have the two statues, statues of the Dwarf King and the Statue of Blessing. If you put these down, it gives you a choice between two perks. They're all different. I think the best two that you can get is the Greater Ladder Chance, obviously, and then the plus one node. The plus one ore per node. I think the rest are kind of meh. Uh, and then the Statue of Blessing, if you click on it, it can give you a bunch of random buffs. The, what, the two that you are specifically looking for, ideally, is a 0.5 move speed buff and or a plus one luck buff. Uh, and then, obviously, we're going to have all the books that we want from the powers. I have all five powers, and then I'm going to be using Way of the Wind Part 1 and 2 for the extra 0.5 move speed. The Dwarvish Safety Manual, so I take 25% less damage from bombs. You want uh, this one. This is basically a small chance of a Burglar's Ring proc to happen. And then Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Don't really need much else. Special charm is also nice to have. Uh, every other book really doesn't matter. And then we're going to be using the Infinity Crown because I can. Uh, that said, we are not actually going to be using this file because I had to set the date to a specific day for this to work. So the reason I say that is because uh, these dwarf, the dwarf statues and the blessing statues basically are seated to the day. So I can't change it at all. So I had to skip a bunch of days to figure out which day would give me the best luck I can get while at the same time giving me the two statue buffs I want. So this account has everything that I just showed off but equipped already in the right slots. So we're going to get plus one ode per nor or plus one ore per node. And then this is going to give me plus one luck. And this is what I ended up with. Again, the latter's one could arguably be better, but they're kind of interchangeable. And then obviously the same setup. Uh, but yeah, I had to sleep a few days. Uh, I said it earlier in the other run. I could literally just be like, here's how you get the most calico eggs. Staircase 10,000 floors. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. That's lame. I think it's better to just go in with like five staircases and have fun with it. Get our two luck buffs and then I'm just gonna do a quick little yoink there. Uh, let's do this. You're just gonna see this massive 
buff section over here, and it's kind of funny. Get over here, we're gonna do our lovely rare fruit into uncomfortably hot sauce for the plus three move speed and plus four luck. Well, I guess it's more. So, wait. So we have plus nine luck and plus three move speed. Yeah, that's balanced. Don't forget to accept the quest. I hate how fast it goes up and it just goes away. Uh, reach level 30. Don't forget to accept the quest. You know what? All right, and here we go. So if anybody has never seen the power of explosive ammo in a slingshot, you're about to realize how broken it is. I also need to zoom out. We love instant bombs. It's actually stupid. Uh, also, if you're wondering, this is a max luck die as well. We got that statue. I think it's good to get the statues early. Should have let the bomb go off. I would have gotten more our case value out of it. Now, I feel like I got better luck with the uh, drop shafts at the start of the last run than I am getting here. Ain't gonna lie. Probably hit more statues already, though. No. Uh, apparently I cannot aim my shot. Monsters do more damage already. Auto powder. Only if we could have gotten that early in our uh. Perfection run. Oh, fuck. See, that's why you always break uh, rocks on those chest floors when available. As you can see there, I got a free drop shaft because of it. Let everything attract to me. I'm gonna eat this. Apparently, I'm taking a lot of damage. Uh, not too bad of a trade, I guess. In fact, we're trying to get the move speed bonus from the statues ASAP here. Uh, that would be, like, the biggest buff we can get. Alco eggs, okay. Uh, we're getting really good ore deposits, though, which is nice. I about to say, I knew I could get those. Gotta backtrack a little for that. You know, I will say the only annoying part about the fairy is that little thing every, uh, like two seconds. Because I keep getting into combat because I keep hitting myself with explosive ammo. Or whatever, and it's just like, ding, ding. It's honestly a worse noise than elevator resetting. Which is, like, hard to do. Can I get the moose speed buff game? Okay, if you're wondering why I'm getting so many chest floors, keep in mind, I have plus nine luck and it's a max luck day. <laughs> like, I think every floor I go down, I have, what, a 10% chance of getting a, uh, a ladder floor or some, some, th something stupid like that. Like.
fully refreshed. They don't really need that. Come on, move speed bonus. More serpents, okay. Move speed. Mystery boxes from it now. That's interesting. The desert festival is open. Again, it's, uh, you gotta be paused a lot during Skull Caverns if you want to do it optimally, and that's mainly just because of, uh, it wastes time to let things attract to you while the in-game clock is moving, and things still attract to you while you're paused. So it's kind of just optimal to just constantly be pausing. I'm not doing it nearly as much as I could be. But I, I, you still have to do it to a degree. Oh, fact, kind of sucks. When you're in Skull Caverns, you gotta optimize as much time as you can get. More monsters. One of our... The only bad part about having so many buffs, it's hard to tell which, uh... Which buff disappears. Uh... <laughs> when it drops. Also, the mystical one-floor drop shaft into the floor 100 chest. Gaming. There's the speed boost. Whee! The ladder over there. Play the refresh. Took me too long to uh, blow up stuff on that floor. And every time we activate a cat statue, we get a higher, uh... Uh, egg level, which is what we want, because the higher egg level you are, the more likely you are to find eggs from whatever you're doing. Really want to be touching... Or, yeah, clicking on the cat statues. Probably always a good idea to occasionally kill enemies for this move speed bonus. There's a ladder at the end, but I'm just gonna skip the floor. Seems too much of a hassle to do. Interesting cat statue placement. Very interesting. Uh, 
Uh, I'm gonna probably stop. Like, I, I've been opening those uh, chests for, like, fun, but probably. Monsters do less damage. It's probably time to stop because it's just gonna make my inventory annoying. Eh, I probably should have gone for that statue. The nice thing about, uh... The nice thing about explosive ammo is the fact that it gives you, uh, a damage buffer. Because it's like you take damage from the ammo, so you have the immunity frame, so you can't take nearly as much damage from enemies. Uh... I was thinking about skipping this floor, but I shouldn't need to. Um, I'm just gonna do this before I realize that I overstack and I don't have inventory room for more. Nice prizzy. Well, the refresh is always nice. This floor stinks. Kind of get lost in the sauce sometimes when I do these runs, not gonna lie. They take a lot of focus. Especially if you want to do them quickly and not have it take 10 years by just pause buffering the entire time. I've, no, I, I've heard a few raids and a few uh, subs that I've definitely missed. More monsters! Ruh row. All right, yeah. So this is new for those who have never seen this. Once you, uh, when you get to floor 200 and floor 300, you'll get two and then, uh, up to three Skull Caverns chests. I love how both of them had seed makers. They generally both don't have the same thing, but that is a thing now. Uh, the only issue with them is, unlike floor 100, you can actually skip them with, uh... Uh... Yeah, you can skip them if you take a... Drop Shaft. Kinda sucks, but... Enemies give a lot of eggs once you actually start uh, getting deep. I have so many buffs that it's not showing as many, or it's not showing how many, but I'm, uh, I think I'm at an 87 egg count. 
But it's like, I don't know. I got seven for that. Like, they can give a lot of eggs, but they also don't always. You need a much higher egg count for them to actually do. And I feel like if you just want to go lower, and then once you get to a point, you kind of just mega bomb the entire floor and then just have other uh at, or you just have the rocks give the extra i feel like is like the best thing to do i don't know i mean obviously the best thing to do is to literally just you know ladder a thousand floors but no one really wants to do that Again, well, not even again. Let, let me say this. I know this is not going to be the most optimal, high-end quality, most eggs you will ever, ever see in your lifetime type of run. This is just more of what a high-end run can be. Like, like, as I said, there is already optimizations. I, st I started this day with, first off, five ladders. Obviously, you can start with much more. I don't even have Cinder Clown shoes on. I don't have multiple weapon types. Uh, yeah, whatever. You can keep going from that. You can also be ring swapping, which I'm not doing, because you'll you'll catch me dead before I start ring swapping again. The more that I do this run, the more that I'm realizing, or the more that I'm noticing, I don't think the plus one node actually works on uh, the calico eggs. I think I think that's a scam. He's washed, yeah. basically what it sums up to. Uh, if you want to kill a bunch of monster, mo monster musk would be good. Same with, uh, hard mode, uh, the, the hard mode caverns portion of it. Go to hard mode. Again, I don't know what 100% is optimal. I'm kind of just showcasing what I think would probably be best for a more average player who's just trying to get as many eggs as possible. More bats. Egg. Egg.
empty. I don't know if, like, doing floors like that are, like, worth it. And it's kind of like, you know. What can you do? seven eggs from that. I feel like, like, I just don't feel that it's worth. I don't like monsters doing more damage. Can we stop getting monsters do more damage? That one's not fun. How many eggs am I? Oh god. <laughs> We're at a few eggs, chat. Honestly, I have more than I thought we did. I'm pretty sure I would have got him bug killed if I uh took that because you have a few frames of uh, vulnerability when you're going down a drop shaft so if you take the drop shaft and an enemy is right next to you you can take the damage from the drop shaft and then die from the enemy hit which is what I was scared of right there I think once you get to a certain point down, Mega Bombs become better because it's actually good to destroy as many rocks as possible because not only do the nodes have a chance of giving you, uh, the eggs, even, like, r regular rocks do. And when you're deep enough, like, the odds are high enough where I think it's not that bad to just kill everything or blow up everything. And then you can kill the enemies on the way back or even more. It sucked to be a little bit of waiting, but... Stop getting monsters do more damage. That's no fun. More monsters. Was a banger floor. Cool. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's a armada on this floor. There's a few of them. Oh, no one uh, has a fear of bugs.
Gotta make sure I'm not dying to anything dumb. I'm over stacking stone now, which kind of sucks, but whatever. I don't care at this point. It is 1220. Just got a... Be aware of it. There's a mummy in that statue. Food is half as effective. Well, luckily I have a fairy. monsters. Oh. Well, we're gonna... Things are winding down here. Oh, we don't got that much more time. Uh, probably last floor. Okay, we got a dip. Alright. Why do we get an egg score of 141? Not too bad. Not too bad. An egg score of 141. This picture just is hilarious, by the way. This is probably the new best, like, facial expression in the game right here. <laughs> the fucking Poggers gill face. <laughs> so I got 3,165 in a single day. I also got 600 already or more. Not bad, not bad. <laughs>